It's Friday, we celebrate the Annunciation of the Lord. Let's begin our prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. You know, as we go through life, we, we heard so many things about the Holy Family that sometimes it's become, we oversimplify their lives. So as we begin, let's kind of reflect on the, when people oversimplify our lives. For the times we fail to trust in God, we ask God's forgiveness, and so we pray, Lord, have mercy. Christ have, Christ, have Christ have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We glorify God as we pray. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who will that your words should take on the reality of human flesh in the womb of the Virgin Mary, grant that we who confess our Redeemer to be God and man, may merit to become partakers even in his divine nature, through Christ our Lord. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord spoke to Ahas, saying, Ask for a sign from the Lord your God. Let it be deep as the netherworld or high as the sky. But Ahas answered, I will not ask. I will not tempt the Lord. Then Isaiah said, Listen, O house of David, is it not enough for you to weary people? Must you also weary my God? Therefore the Lord himself will give you this sign. The virgin shall be with child and bear a son and shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. Here, Here I, I am, am, Lord, I come to do your will. Sacrifice or oblation you wish not, but ears open to obedience you gave me. Holocaust or sin offerings you sought not, then said I, behold, I come. Here, Here I, I am, Lord, Lord I, come I come to do your will. In the written scroll it is prescribed for me, to do your will, O Lord, my God, is my delight, and your law is within my heart. Here, Here I, I am, Lord, Lord I, come I come to do your will. I announce your justice in the vast assembly. I did not restrain my lips, as you, O Lord, know. Here, Here I, I am, Lord, Lord I come to do your will. Your justice I kept not hid within my heart. Your faithfulness and your salvation I have spoken of. I have made no secret of your kindness and your truth in the vast assembly. Here, Here I, I am, Lord, Lord I, come I come to do your will. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, it is impossible that the blood of bulls and goats take away sins. For this reason, when Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you prepared for me. In holocaust and sin offerings you took no delight. Then I said, as is written of me in the scroll, behold, I come to do your will, O God. First he says, sacrifices and offerings, holocaust and sin offerings, you neither desired nor delighted in. These are offered according to the law. Then he says, Behold, I come to do your will. He takes away the first to establish the second. By this will, we have been consecrated through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. The word of the Lord. Friends, may the Lord be with you. Let us be attentive to this reading of the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And come to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of David, his father. He will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, but how can this be, since I have no relations with a man? The angel said to her in reply, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. 
the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month for her who was called barren, for nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. You know, we kind of do a disservice to Mary, to God, and to, I think, the rest of humanity. First of all, we have this ideal picture that the scene is perfect. Mary's dressed in these wonderful, wonderful clothes when she was probably a young teenager, and she was probably like cleaning the house or something like that. She's all dirty, doing the chores and all the kinds of stuff she's supposed to do. And then we go to this thing. The angel appears to her. And for about, took me, what, a minute and a half to read that, the angel says to her, guess what's going to happen? You're going to conceive a son, and you're going to give birth, and he's going to be named Jesus, the son of the God, God's son. And then Mary asks her a question, and then poof, the angel's gone. Well, and Mary says at the end, let it be done to me according to your word. Now, that sounds real easy and real nice. But let's go back. The angel Gabriel tells Mary what's going to happen. Now Mary, like women of her day, couldn't have been able to read or write. Her prayers would have been what she heard and she memorized them. And this young girl is told somehow that this is what's going to happen. Well, she's already realized changes in her body, probably doesn't understand them. What's next? Okay, she's going to have a child. Well, She's got to tell mom and dad, and she's got to tell Joseph. And what are people going to say? And on top of that, in that society, not only was she facing Joseph, and I'm sure that didn't go all that easy, her parents, but you got to remember, in that day, if it was revealed, she would have been stoned to death. So we have a whole lot of things going on, and it happens very quickly in this reading, but life isn't that simple. Life is filled with struggles. Life is fear of doubt. Mary, I'm sure, is trying to understand how could this thing happen? How did I get in this position? What is kind of going on? So I think, you know what? We can relate to Mary if we really look at it and how it probably happened. It wasn't the half-hour Brady Bunch where everything was figured out and everything was fine, that's not real life. I'm sure there were difficult days. We have them. I'm sure there were doubts. We have them. I'm sure there were struggles. We have them. I'm sure it was tough facing Joseph and Joseph facing her. Tough situation. I'm sure her parents were hurried, were worried and hurt because how could they understand it as well? It's just way beyond anybody's comprehension. And yet, through it all, somewhere along the line, Mary says, let it be done to me. That, I think, is the real gift. So whatever problems we're working out, whatever struggles we're having, look to Mary. It wasn't simple. It wasn't easy. But in the end, she said yes. God bless. For those people who are pregnant, we pray. For children, we pray. Especially for the children in the womb, we pray. For parents, we pray. For grandparents, we pray. God, our Father, we ask you to hear our prayer and to truly bless us on this journey through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to give you, which earth is given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to give you, fruit of the vine, work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Friends, let us pray that our gifts will be acceptable to God, our loving Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good God's holy church. Be pleased to accept your church's offering so that she, who is aware of her beginning, lie in the incarnation of your only begotten Son, may rejoice to celebrate his mysteries on this solemnity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. For the Virgin Mary heard with faith that Christ was to be born among men and for our sake, by the overshadowing of the power of the Holy Spirit. 
Lovingly, she bore him in her immaculate womb that promises to the children of Israel might come about and the hope of the nations be accomplished beyond all telling. And so we truly join our loved ones in heaven as we pray this hymn of an ending praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke the bread, gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. Similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop. Remember George McCatera, Francis McDonald, Dorothy and Albert Adrian, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that they who are united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection for all those who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that, together with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, Joseph, her husband, the apostles, the martyrs, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, may we merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, may we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever we now pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our day that by the help of your mercy we may be free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait with joyful hope the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of the church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. May the peace of our Lord be with each one of you. Let's offer to one another a sign of God's love. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Confirm in our minds the mysteries of our faith, O Lord, that confessing he who was conceived of the Virgin Mary is both God and man. We may, through the saving power of his resurrection, attain eternal joy through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May God's blessing truly guide us on our journey, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. 
Let us go now in peace to love and serve the Lord. Have a good weekend, everyone.